Imagine that you're a poor simple peasant farmer in the mid 14th century. The only skills you know are plowing and sowing seeds, not only in the field but also with your unbathed wife, resulting in three starving freeloading children. How cute! Pat pat pat. You're in the middle of your daily farm run when suddenly your neighbor approaches and leans down to your dusty son, blasting an entire sneeze into his open mouth and walking away without a word. Congratulations, your family is now the host of something called the plague. Little do you know, your entire life is about to change for the worse. Or for the better depending on how much you actually care for your son. In the year 1346, a big storm was a brewing in the east. Residents of China, India, Turkey, and Palestine were feeling a bit under the weather. So far under the weather in fact that they ended up 6 feet under the ground. Because they died. Believed to have originated from Central Asia, the bacterial infection known today as the bubonic plague or black plague began spreading like the plague. Accelerating through heavily used trade routes, it did not take long to extend its reach. The infection was initially only transmitted through bites of fleas piggybacking off of rats, but you could also get it through direct contact with infected tissue or by having a friendly neighbor sneeze into your mouth. The rapid spread and swiftness of death caused major panic. With mortality rates as high as 60%, people were seeing friends and family quickly evolve from being alive to not alive in a matter of a few days. Even though death was quick, getting there was not so pretty. A physician residing in Spain published his first-hand accounts of the effects of the plague on his fellow humans. For the sake of not sounding like an uncultured idiot, I will not attempt to pronounce his name, but here it is. However, I do know that these are two characters from the hit Disney film Aladdin. No, not that one. Yeah, the good one. Anyway, he states that an infection would begin with a rising fever that left patients disoriented and depressed. They would then go on to experience a plethora of excruciating symptoms that you usually hear about at the end of a prescription drug commercial. Consult your town's spooky doctor if you have experienced the Black Plague. Plague may appear in adults ages 0 to 112 and may cause an increase in cramps, coldness in the extremities, frequent vomiting, skin lesions, chest tightness, difficulty breathing, spitting of blood, stinging chest pain, inflammation, intense thirst, coughing, blackness of tongue, swelling of the throat, abscesses, difficulty or impossibility of swallowing, headaches, fainting fits, dizziness, nausea, and foul-smelling diarrhea. If any of these symptoms worsen, it is most likely too late for you. Black Plague is not for everyone, but everyone you know will get it. So yeah, getting the plague sucked. And to make matters worse, many doctors back then were about as qualified in medicine as a TikTok comment section. So they just looked at their infected patients and went, huh, that's weird. Try draining all your blood. Oh, oh, that didn't work? Well, let's let's rub some herbs in it. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, I'm such a good doctor. And of course, if your doctors couldn't help, then there was only one other place you could really turn to. Not surprisingly, religion really wasn't that much help either. Some of the more hardcore religious nuts believe that they absolutely deserve the plague for being such naughty boys. So they did a little thing called self-flagellation, or the act of beating the ever-loving Christ out of yourself. The practice was so popular that even the Pope at the time, Pope Clement VI, came out and said, Stop it. Get some help. And so they did. Instead, they simply resorted to placing the blame of the plague on minority groups. Some smarter folks began a more effective practice called common sense, where they would simply avoid other people who they suspected to be infected. Italy even took a step further, forcing ships arriving from infected ports to sit offshore for up to 40 days, or a quarantena, which is where the word quarantine comes from. Of course, there were larger consequences experienced by the severe loss of life. Across Europe and Asia, the available labor force crumbled and trade routes halted, with landlords no, desperate for workers. Please, no. With no smelly peasants to harvest crops, food shortages were the norm, with prices hyperinflating on what scarce food remained. Eventually though, through continued quarantines and improved hygienic practices, the Black Plague did subside in 1351. It did poke its head in from time to time over the following centuries, but it wasn't nearly as bad. In the end, from 1347 to 1351, an estimated 25 to 75 million people died from the plague, the majority being impoverished laborers and peasants. But there was still hope for the absolute chattiths who survived. As I mentioned, landowners were desperate for workers, and with such high demand, with such little supply, they were required to pay laborers a much prettier penny for their work. If their landlords refused to pay more, workers now had the freedom to tell them to frig off since other landlords needed workers as well. 
Suddenly, peasants were zooming by in their low-riding, one-horsepower tricked-out Mustangs and moving up in the social ranks, with some becoming artists, musicians, and influencers. Furthermore, the sheer amount of death inspired people to appreciate the finer things in life, focusing on themselves instead of religious figures, with the birth of humanism. Inspiration evolved into deeper scientific curiosity as medical professionals wished to learn more about what just killed all of their friends. Society was quickly realizing the fragility of human life and sought a way to better themselves through increased interaction, sharing of ideas, artistic expression, and scientific ingenuity. If the Black Plague has taught us anything, it's that a majority of society needs to be swiftly erased before all of the really cool stuff starts happening. But that sounds like something a dictator would say. 